Okay, let's look at, this is a chapter 7 homework problem. It's chapter 7.5. Um, let's go through and just work through this and see, see what we got. So we're supposed to create a golden search function to find the minimum of an input function. Okay, so that's all, kind of the, the big picture. So now specifically, we, we're going to use that function to solve uh, for the value of x that maximizes f of x from this problem. So let's come in here and let's just start stuff. So f is equal to at x. Uh, minus 1.5 times x to the 6 uh, minus 2 times x to the 4th uh, plus 12 times x. Okay, so there's our function. Okay, and we need to create this uh, golden search function that maximizes that. Now again, the way we've been doing the golden search function is we've been using the minimum. So we need to, as it says here, uh, to find the maximum you must multiply the function times minus 1. So just for for fun, so x l is equal to zero, x u is equal to two. That's coming from here, right here. Okay. So let's plot this. So let's right off the bat say f plot of f comma, and then we can just use our x u and x l, x l, x u. Okay. So let's plot this. I'm gonna clear everything again. Remember my CCC is clear all, close all CLC. Okay. So let's run this. So this is what it looks like. So our answer is clearly going to be, you know, here-ish, right? So what is that? It's going to be, uh, we can zoom in pretty well. It's going to be around 0 0.92, 0 0.93, and a value of 8.67, 8.7-ish, somewhere around there, right? So that's clearly the answer. So that's what we're going to expect. So now we need to be able to find it remotely. So again, right off the bat, the a problem is that this is the maximum. We need to find the minimum. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say minus one or the negative of this function. So it turns out, unfortunately, I wish you could. I wish you could just magically do something like this, but it just doesn't work. It gives you errors. But you can do the negative of that internally. So, but the thing. So now we're going to find be finding the minimum. The rem, what we need to remember is that the value that it returns, the x is the right spot. But the, the function evaluated there is going to be the negative of the maximum. So we need to make sure we fix that. Okay. So now we have the plot. So here, let's run this. So there we have that plot. Now, just real quick, I'm getting this warning. Warning function fails on array inputs. Use element-wise operators to increase speed. So when you use fplot, it tries to do certain things. And what this means is that it will be happier if I let it do this. If I do, and well, and I don't need that one. So now if I run it, I won't get that warning anymore, and it'll be faster doesn't really matter, but, you know, for onesies, twosies, it doesn't matter, but if you're doing a lot of these, it makes sense. You want to try to stay efficient. <clears throat> okay, so going back here, sorry to keep it in the window. Uh, we need to create, yeah, that, that's it. We need to go through and, and do it. So how do we create the golden function? Well, what is the golden function? What I'm going to do is I'm going to first create the algorithm or the idea the process in here, and then I'll pull it out into a separate file. Okay, so how I would do this is right off the bat, instead of worrying about any while loops or anything, let's just do real simple. Let's go for i is equal to 1 to 1,000, 10,000, a whole bunch, right? Computers are fast. You can crank things out. Okay, so what is a basic idea of the golden search? Well, first off, we have to define um, our golden ratio. So r is what, square root of 5 minus two, 1 over 2. The problem is you don't want to do it inside this loop because you're calculating that every time. So I can say r is equal to square root of 5 minus 1, all this, divided by 2. Okay, so now we have r. And now, remember, what are we trying to do? Let's, let's uh, create this plot again. Uh, here it is. So here's my plot. We're going to first, we have this lower bound here. We have this upper bound here. And then we're going to take this value, and we're going to take we're going to create this d value. So d is equal to what? It's r times x. So r times uh, x u minus x l, right? And so what we're trying to do is we're we're trying to move away from this lower limit by some value d, and that's going to give us define our x one over here. And I'm going to move away from this limit to some value d. It's going to define our x2 over here. So let's go ahead and do that. x1 is equal to xl, so the lower limit, plus d. x2 is equal to x upper limit minus d. Okay. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and evaluate the function. Because again, the purpose of the golden search is that it's extremely efficient. So 
f, the function evaluated at x1 is f of x1. So nothing too exciting there. Function evaluated at 2 is f of x2. The reason we'll do, we're doing that, it'll become a little more clear here in a little bit. So we got that. And yeah, there we go. So let's, just for fun, let's actually, I'm going to do this the one time on here and then we won't do it anymore. Uh, let's actually look at those values. I'm going to comment this out for a second so I can run it. So my x1 is 1.23, so it's right around here. And my x2 is 0.76, so right around here. So I've defined, gone from here over to here, from here over to here. Okay. Now, this is the, the algorithm, the loop. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to come in here, and we're going to do this a whole bunch of times. And we're going to say our x, um, well, we're going to say if, what? f1 is less than f2. Okay. So if f1, so in other words, if this function, if this value is less than this value, in this case, that will be, that'll be true, right? No, this is f1, so that'll be false. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if this number is less than this number, then the answer is over here, otherwise it's over here. Okay, so if f1 is less than f2, then, and now here's where the whole strength of this comes in. You don't want to have to calculate everything. You just want to rearrange the names, and this is what's special about the golden ratio, using the golden ratio. x1 uh, becomes x2, x2 becomes... Sorry, I misspoke. That's not x1. That's x l. x l, the lower one, moves up to x1. x2 becomes x1. Now we have to find the new x1 value because remember we only have to find find one new spot and evaluate the function in one new place. So x1 becomes x lower plus some number. Now here's the question. So this, we're going to call it d. Problem is it's not going to be this d. Because now we have, we've now compressed the thing, and here's the other kind of cool thing about this, is D is R times D. So that's a, the beauty, is every time it drops by the same ratio, right? This R is a 0.61, I, what is R? It's, it's square root of 5. What is What value is this? It's like 0 0.61803, right? So there we go. So it becomes roughly 60%, but again, it's not its not the roughly that matters. It's exactly this, which is what makes this kind of the, an efficient process. So D becomes R times D. <coughs> Excuse me. So then, therefore, you can say X1 is now that. Okay. And now we have to evaluate the functions everywhere. Now the thing is, F of 2 is... So x2 became x1. So I could say f of x2, right? That mathematically totally works, but it defeats the purpose of this. It is f1. That is why we evaluate it out here, right? Since x2 is now x1, we already calculated the function here, and we did it right here, and we called it f1. So f2 is f1, and f1 is the one that we have to reevaluate, f of x1. And then I'm going to call it x opt, my optimal value is x1 and my function evaluated at said location is f1. Okay, so now again, quite frankly, if I do x1 or x, uh, well, yeah, x1 or that's the one that makes most sense. Eventually you're going to collapse and so it's close enough. Now, the other option is what if f1 is greater than f2? Well, that means the answer is on the other side, so now we've got to rearrange things differently. We're going to say x upper is equal to x1, x1 is equal to x2, so we rearrange our x locations, calculate our one new y, uh, x location, which is x upper minus d, right? And again, regardless of which loop, we fix the d right here, so we're going to be going through that d correctly, okay? And f1 is equal to f2. And f2 is equal to, now we have to reevaluate that function at x2. And then again, x opt is equal to x2 in this case, and fx is equal to the function evaluated at that x optimal is x at function 2. So that's it. That, and that really is the golden search right here, right? So if the answer is on one side, then rearrange things. And every time we're going to compress down by the same ratio, and if the answer is on the other side, then move things in the other direction. And that's really it. I mean, we can let's run that. Let's see if it works. See if I did any mistakes as we went along. 
Okay, so this is claiming that, uh, well, I didn't actually spit it out. First off, I want to comment those because I don't care. Not comment, but suppress those. So my x opt and my f of x. Okay, so let's kick out those. So it's claiming that my optimal value is at 0 0.91692. So do we buy that? Zoom in here. Wonk. I, that seems pretty believable. 91592. Yeah, 91612. Okay. And the function evaluated there is minus 8.697. So minus 8.697. Yeah. Um, that's That seems to be the, the case. So I believe that. So here's now. So this works. This is lovely. It's not, again, the whole point of this is that it's efficient. And right now we're not doing anything efficient about this. We're doing 10,000 times, right? We can come in here and say, hey, what if I only want to do 100 times? I'm curious how different the answer is. It looks pretty dang similar. So how many times do we need to do it? What if we do 10? Uh, you can start seeing a little bit of difference. Well, hey, what if I do 5? This is what you call really not very thorough process, right? Just taking a guess of what it is. So what is the right way to do this? Well, this is where we want to make this for loop. We want to change it into a while loop, okay? And so what is our fundamental idea behind the while loop? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to replace this for statement with a while, and I'm going to, we've talked about this EA, my relative value, while my, my number hasn't changed, and I need to put that in absolute value, while my numbers don't change a lot, well, that is larger than uh, ES, right? So while my numbers are changing enough, and that's based on ES, so enough to say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm still making progress, I'm still getting closer to the answer, so keep on going. Eventually, you're not making enough of a change, so it's going to say, okay, fair enough, I'm going to stop. Okay, so what what do we set ES to? Well, does it say in here? Uh, it doesn't say, so I'm just going to make it up. Um, ES is equal to, let's, let's say our sig figs, uh, 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 5 sig figs, why not? Okay, so there we go. <coughs> and... EA, first pass through here. First time through here, it's going to say, is the absolute value of EA greater than ES? Well, EA doesn't exist. So I'm going to make it up. Because as soon as I get in here, I'm going to calculate a new EA. So it's a non-issue, right? So put in something. Again, I like 999 because that way if I see it later, I know something's clearly wrong. It's not going to accidentally calculate 999. So there we go. Okay. And for giggles, I'm going to say N is equal to 0. And in here, I'm going to say n is equal to n plus, oops, plus 1. Now, this is absolutely not necessary, but this is uh, out of curiosity. I'm curious, how many iterations does it take? Eventually, you can get rid of that. But right now, I'm just kind of curious uh, how many iterations it takes. Okay. So there we go. Now, it's going to come in here, and it's going to say absolute value of 999 is greater than this number. Yep, and it's going to go down through here, but it'll never come out because I need to calculate EA somewhere inside of here. So what is EA? EA is always old minus new divided by new, right? That is what EA is. Okay, so what is the new? What are we trying to look for? We're trying to find this X opt when this value doesn't really change, right? So that is going to be my new. So I'm going to replace this for X opt and this for X opt. Okay, so what is my old? Well, it's the it's my x opt the previous guess right so the way I like to do this which to me just makes the most sense is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say um, old yeah I'm not even I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it yeah x old or x opt old is equal to x opt right so in other words you go through and you grab what it was. You calculate the new value either here or here, and then you go through and do this. So I'm going to call this again. This is x opt old. Okay. So this is all lovely. Fair enough, right? The one problem is the first pass through here is going to say is x opt or x opt old is equal to x opt. Well, what is x opt? Uh, we don't have anything for the first pass. So I'm going to again just make it sure that the first time through there it doesn't get upset. And so let's call it the x lower or upper, or one, or two, it doesn't matter, right? Just get, get one of those values. Okay, now I think this should work. Boom. Look at that. So it took 25 iterations uh, to get within five sig figs. Okay, cool. Let's change this. Just, let's play around with this. If we do, say, 
three sig figs. Then it takes 17 iterations. Okay, fair enough. So that's that's what we have. So that is our functional algorithm. Okay, so now notice we have not created a golden search function. We've created an algorithm. So since I already have a function here, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it, okay, function. And let's let's be smart about this. Let's give it the x optimum and the f of x as uh, my golden and we want to send it. Does it say here what to say to send it? Uh, no, so we can send what we want. Let's send it the function, the x uh, lower, the x upper, and the es value. Okay, and then you're going to get in the habit of putting some some comment that explains above. So one thing that I've gotten in the habit of actually is I will do this. I'll just copy that. So then the reason for I do that, well here, let's save this. I'm gonna call this my golden, lovely. There we go. Now from here, the reason I do that is if I help my golden, it will uh, put whatever I type there. So I can just see my function. Because again, is it XL, XU, or is it XU, XL? Uh, you know, you could do either one. It's not like a right and wrong. So this way I can just see what it is, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back in here <coughs> and I'm going to copy all this and I'm going to slap it in here okay now R yep that needs to be here D needs to be here this 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 yeah it looks like all this needs to be here okay I don't need to do that right because that was just for curiosity sake I can come here I'm the last thing I want to do is do that because I don't want to display stuff from the function because it it's very misleading makes people think that you you return something if you didn't um. Yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna find something that I didn't do right here, but let's let's play with it. So now let's wipe out all this stuff, and we're gonna say now the uh, x opt and the function, the max. Well, max val. Here, let's let's give it even better names. X max val and the max val is equal to my. Uh, golden, is that what I call it? My golden of F, X, L, X, U, and E, S. I'm going to, sure, I'm just going to make up something for E, S. And that's that. So does this work? Boom, it worked. Hey, didn't make any mistakes. That's actually somewhat surprising. So there we go. So that is now creating the golden function. Now, we're not done yet because when all of a sudden done, remember, this is still finding the negative. So let's come in here and say, hey, you know what? We found the negative. We actually need to find the maximum value. So how do we find the maximum value? So right off the bat, I'm going to go through and say, so the x is still the, the right thing. But the max val, I'm going to say max val. You can either do absolute value of max val. You can say the max val is equal to... Uh, the function, uh, well, in this case, minus one times the function at ma uh, x max val, because I still have the function as a negative up here. Um, I'm sure there's other ways. Either way, you're going to get the, the same answer. You'll also get the same answer on both of these the 8.69. So our max val, the, the x location, so where it occurs. Oh, and we should let's go back to plotting the. Hmm. Let's go back to plotting the right thing. Can I do this? I don't know if this will work. Oops. Nope, it does not like that. <coughs> so let's go back to doing this right. And I'm going to say g is equal to minus is at x minus f of x. This is just, and so that way I can come in here and I'm going to send a G instead, but I'm going to actually plot F. Boom, run this. Okay, so now I've plotted it in the right direction. My maximum value is occurs at 0 0.91671, and the actual max value, oh, this no longer makes sense. So let's, let's fix that. Excuse me. Let's fix that. So the max value occurs there. Um, it doesn't make sense because I changed F, right? I put F back to normal. So, and maybe it would make sense to suppress this because I'm put here, it says the max value is that, and it's clearly not. So then I'm going to say 
x max val and there we go so the x max value is there and the maximum value the function evaluated at that location is there there we go i think that is it um so again here's the the function all this stuff is part of the function uh, and the, the idea here is that you save this and then you just put it away and you say you know i know that it works so i'm not going to think a whole lot about it anymore i'm going to put it away and then I'm going to use it on occasion, and it's super easy to use because I just call it one thing. And I wrote the function so that it returns both the value, the x and the y you know, values. Give it my stuff. What if I want to do, say, five sig figs? Well, then I'd go in here and I'd say es is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And then I'd come and I'd change this to es, and I'd run it. Works lovely. Again, we're talking five sig figs is you know, beyond the numbers that we're looking at here, so it doesn't matter. But there you go.